All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are rolling right into another video. This is 3D8. We used to call this the Q ramp um, because it looks kind of like a Q and it's got a ramp on it. Okay, I don't know who names this stuff. I think I did. <laughs> uh, but here we go. All right, so looking at the three different sides, and again, don't forget, there are really six different sides, but when we're looking at a 3D model like this, we only see three of those sides. We see what faces the top. We see what faces the front side. That front side is over here. And then we see what faces the right side, which is over here, that ramp, and like part of this. Okay, so looking at this, this is a very easy one to figure out which side has the most detail to it because you don't want to have to do that detail later. Okay, it's easier to do that detail in 2D than it is to do in 3D. So let's look at the three different sides. Looking at the top, I don't even know, I guess you would do a box, but you know, the fillet would happen later, this fillet would happen later. Uh, but the problem is that if you had a box and you extruded that and you had a box for this one, two problems. Number one, this is not a box. This is a Q shape, okay? And the second thing is this would not be a box. This is uh, like a half of a box, which is like a half of a piece of a grilled cheese sandwich here uh, or cut into quarters. Uh, so that wouldn't work, okay? So let's look at the other sides. Let's go to the right side. The right side, I've got a box here which would pull out, but the problem is is that if you can see, that box doesn't go all the way. There would be a piece that we would have to put back in there to subtract away. So I don't really like that side either, okay? Uh, and then the top, yeah, you could put a box up there, but that's not a box. That's rounded. So then you'd have to do, I guess, four fillet edges to make it a circle and put a circle in. I don't know. That would be tough as well, okay? So I don't like that way. So now let's go to the front, okay? The front. This is the easiest shape to draw out of all three in 2D. Okay, you're also going to be able to, here's the thing about this ramp. The ramp is the hardest piece if you don't really know what you're doing with it. This ramp fits perfectly into this curve, this line, this curve, and this line. So if it fits perfectly in there, then you know that it actually uses the exact same lines. So it, it is made up of five things, curve, down, curve, over, and slant we would already have five of those and we would have to find the actual uh, ramp piece which is only one line that we have to figure out okay so with that being said let's start a new one let's draw it from the front well, we're gonna change that to front there looking at the dimensions here let's change this view back Penny's chasing her tail again back there it's all good Alright, so we've got something that is from the end, 6 over gets us to the center of the circles. We've got a half inch here, we've got 3 quarters and then the fillet of radius 1 fourth, not 3 quarters and then that gets filleted. Filleted? I don't know. So it's actually really an inch high and then it comes back down 3 quarters and then a quarter here. Okay, so let's start with that. 6, the depth is 3. Well, we don't need to know the depth yet, not until we do some uh, some extruding, okay? So, six. Six, if I bring that line up, I'm going to trim this later. It's actually going to get erased later. It's just a dummy line. Um, if I go up, if I go up, so I'm going to go up one inch, okay? And then I'm going to come back over. I don't know where this line ends yet, so I'm just going to click that here, okay? Now, I'm going to offset one half because that's this little piece down here. That's this. And then I'm gonna offset this line up one quarter because we gotta cut this bottom piece out. So again, it's a lot easier to do that with trimming than it is with building all these different 3D models and subtracting them away. So offset one fourth. Now we can start trimming. We get rid of that and that and that and that. So we're already at that point. Now fill it, radius, one fourth. How did I know it was one fourth? Because it says it right there, radius one fourth. This one will also be a radius one fourth, but again, I don't know where this line is yet, so we're gonna start working this from the other way. Two and a half inches, that's important. From this bottom corner right here that I just created, two and a half up gets you to the center of the circle. So I have the line going this way for the center of the circle, but I do not have it going left to right. So if I go offset 2.5 off of this corner right here, which would be this line, I now have the center of those circles. There are two circles. One of them is a diameter one and five sixteenths. The other one is a radius of one and one fourth. So let's do diameter first. 
1 and 5 sixteenths. That's a smaller circle. And then the radius 1 was, what was that radius? That radius was 1 and 1 fourth. 1 and 1 fourth. Okay, so we get that. Now, let's get rid of these. We don't need them anymore. What we do need is we got to go here with a line and we got to slide over until we get this click. We need that intersection right there. And then we're going to come down. That tells me where that gets trimmed off at. That tells me where I do my fillet radius one half. Again, let's just check that fillet. Uh, you know what? That's not one half. That's actually one quarter. It's not. Yeah, there it is. It's labeled right there. So let's undo that. I knew that looked a little big. Fillet radius one fourth. All right. So now we got that. Now take notice. Whoops. Still recording? Yes. All right. Take notice that straight down from the circles is not this edge, this line right here. It's it's a half inch over from there. How do I know it's a half inch? Because it's right where this curve ends and it's right where this curve begins. And that radius one half would mean that the center of this circle, if it was a full circle, would be right here. So that means that this is half over. It's half up and half over to get to this line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this line back in for a second. And you'll see this is too thick, this neck. So we're going to go one half. Then we're going to get rid Oh, uh, you know what? Before you get rid of that, take a line, connect at this point, and go straight across until it clicks. You now have a point to trim that off at. Uh, you have this that can be trimmed, and this can be erased. So let's do a quick dimensioning right now before we go any further. First dimension we saw was six. It was from there to there. Second one we saw, or one of the second ones, 0.5. This one from here to here should be one. This should be a quarter. This should be a half. Always double check your work. This should be three quarters. Okay, so we're good. Trim the circle. Fill it. Radius. One half like so. That is the front without the ramp. Now the ramp piece, one, two, three, four. We're going to use those lines. Control C is copy. Control V is paste. Stick it out there for a second, okay? Make sure you're doing this whole thing on the front, by the way. If you do it on the top, that's not going to be fun to flip around, all right? It's possible, though. You could actually just select everything, Control C, delete, change it to the front, Control V is paste. Okay, so it's actually not that bad, but make sure you're on the right side. Okay, so how do we do the ramp piece? This piece is good. We can do the join on here too. I'm going to select all those lines. Circle's already closed, so there's there's no need to join that. And if I did accidentally put that in and I do join, it'll actually still work, but it'll say down here, 12 objects converted to one polyline, one object discarded. It discarded this one because it's already a closed shape. It's not part of the other shape, okay? This can only be one full closed shape. So that worked. Now, should there be 12? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, big circle 12. Okay, so that is correct. Now, how do we do the ramp piece? Well, let's see. Later, we'll have to extrude it 5 eighths. All we know is that this is a 45 degree angle here and that it's going to come up. If this is a 90 in there and this is going 45, then we know that this angle here is also 45. So it's going to hit this circle at a 45. And in order to get to that point, which is like the uh, 45 degree angle of this little quadrant right here, we have to do a 45 degree angle. So here's what you're going to do. Take a line, put it at the center of this circle. Type in angle 45 and hit enter. And that's going to start streaking at, at 45 degrees. Click that out here away from anything else because I don't want it to snap to anything by accident. Then hit escape, get out of the line tool, go back into the line tool and click this point. And now we're going to go back down this way and we need to do angle negative 45. And that's now going to stay at negative 45. Again, don't let this snap to that midpoint. That's going to change the line and it's going to bump it out that way. So click this a little bit too far so it doesn't get interrupted by that. Uh, quick trim, 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 trim the circle. We only really need that tiny part. And then this line gets erased. Boom, ramp piece. Five together, join, five objects converted to one polyline. Looks good. Take this, move this in, 
I grabbed it from that base point, so put it back down on that base point. Now we've got one, two, three pieces. Go back to the top, bottom right corner. We are ready to start extruding. Change your 3D tools. Go down to the gear in the bottom right corner. You probably can't see it because I'm down there, but it looks like a little gear. It's called workspace switch or work workspace switching. Uh, and go to 3D basics. Extrude. This and this are going to go negative 3. This one, extrude, negative 5 eighths. Now the problem is, is that this is not in the center. So really we didn't have to move that in yet because it's actually easier. Let's go to uh, conceptual for a second. And you know what, before we do anything else, why don't we just do the subtract of this. What do we want to subtract it from? The big model, enter. What do we want to subtract? Small model, enter. And that's how we get the circle in there. Or the drill hole, you can call it whatever you want. All right, so we got that. What I can do is I can grab this with the move tool. I'm gonna move this. I can grab it from one of these midpoints, either that midpoint or that midpoint, and put that down on the midpoint of where it's supposed to be touching. Now your eyes might start like get bugging out in here because there's so many different lines, but you can see that that actually went right on that midpoint. There are other ways to do that. Uh, you could go like this. You could leave this at the front like we had it, and then you can figure out, well, if this is 3 and this is 5 eighths, 3 minus 5 eighths is 2 and 3 eighths. Half of 2 and 3 eighths is 1 and 3 sixteenths. So I can move this in that direction on the green line. What did I say? 1 and 3 eighths? Okay, let's see if that's in the center. Oh, I totally messed that up. Let's try again. 3 inches, 5 eighths, 2 and 3 eighths, 2 and 3 eighths divided by 2, 1 and 3 sixteenths. So I think I went 1 and 3 eighths. 1 and 3 sixteenths. Boom. Good thing I can deal with adversity. You know what I'm saying? Because people would be saying crazy stuff in my class. And they'd be like, man, you suck. You don't know what you're talking about. No, I'm kidding. Nobody says that. Everybody thinks I'm a king, right? No. All my kids are not laughing right now. And they're like, man, you try to be funny, but you're not. Yeah, I know. But you know what? It's, it's a lot. Doing all these drawings takes a long time. These videos are like very strenuous. They take a long time, a lot of time out of my days. So I got to make myself laugh and I make jokes that I laugh at and that's good enough. All right. All right. So we're done. All you got to do union, put this, oh, we're not done union. These two together. We still have to make a little drill hole in here. So let's go back to here. That drill hole is from the fillet one and a half to the center of the circle. And obviously it's right in the center because it's one and a half this way as well. It's a radius one half. So now we don't have anything that we can use here but we could take a line and hook it to this midpoint and draw this way 1.5. Now at the end of that line is going to be where I put my circle and that's going to be a radius one half. And then I get rid of this line. I extrude that down. How far does it have to go? Well, honestly, it doesn't matter. You could go negative three quarters because that's what this little edge is, but you don't even need to do that. You can actually just send it all the way through and you can see that it's going through the entire model and then subtract it can only subtract it where it's touching the other one so where it touches this one enter take away that one enter and that's where you're gonna get that drill hole right in there alright so that's that go to hidden for printing you can check it on conceptual if you'd like back to top because my view wasn't perfect bottom right corner name one fourth inch text type period and then print it out and that's it alright did I subtract that circle yeah right yes I did okay and that's it. All right, so that is number 3D8, and now you're on to 3D9, the magnet. That one sucks. All right, that one's kind of like the iPhone. That one's a tough one to do. All right, but after the magnet, we start making some cool stuff. Uh, we go into a one that's like the lamp and dresser that we're going to make in 3D. We're going to make a 3D like mailbox landscape with a driveway and curb and all that good stuff. And then we're going to make a 3D detached garage. So we're, we're starting to get into some cooler stuff here. Um, after the magnet, you know all of the 3D tools, and then you're able to apply that to everything else that we do going forward. All right, so we're all done here. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Later.